Hello all. I know that the levels of measurement of variables is a uh, hot topic and sometimes is a interesting topic for uh, students taking introductory courses in uh, statistics. So let's learn together all the levels of measurement and hopefully you can uh, use and utilize this knowledge into your uh, homework. Let's start with uh, talking about the variable. A variable is only a concept or a notion that is measured and it's able to vary. That's the, the meaning of a variable. Now we measure the variables at different levels based on how we choose uh, the variable statistical sophistication. Researchers usually distinguish between four levels of measure and these levels are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Sometimes nominal and ordinal are also called categorical variables and interval and ratio are also called numer numerical or scale variables. Let's talk about each of them in a little bit of detail. Nominal variables simply name the different categories constituting them and this term comes from Latin nomine, Italian nome or Spanish nombre which actually means nothing else but name. This, uh, this type of variable simply distinguishes different kinds of people or different kinds of things. Gender is a good example because it's made of men, women and nowadays other. Um, uh, political party is made of Democrats, Republicans and uh, Independents. Religious affiliation distinguishes Protestants uh, Catholic, Jews, Muslim, and so forth. And then uh, we have also, has a person been arrested or not? Yes or no? That's only naming these categories. These categories are different, but it only names them and it assigns a value to the categories. Uh, type of car, for example, you know, car type. Uh, it, although we like one car more than another, actually this type of variable naming the Honda, Ford, Toyota and so on, it only names these categories and that's all it does. Now uh, many social scientific variables go a step beyond simply naming the different categories constituting a variable and that's why we have the ordinal variable now which arranges these categories in some order for example low to high, less to more, not satisfied, satisfied, very satisfied and so on. A perfect uh, variable that is in the ordinal scale is the Amazon rating. Whenever you buy something, you go to the ratings first, and then you look at how many stars each person is each person uh, buyer actually gives to the product. You will see the five stars, four stars, and so on. And then you'll see that those who are very satisfied, then they give five stars, and those who are not satisfied, they give one star, and so on. Another great example is the letter grades A, B plus, B, C, and F, and and so on. Okay, so the uh, the we know that there is a difference between A and B plus, and also between C and F. However, we cannot measure cannot uh, measure the difference, the real difference between these grades because these are letter grades. We just know that one is better than the other. However, these differences are not measurable, and that's the attribute of the ordinal variable. The other two levels of measurement are ratio and interval. Usually these are called numerical variables and they are very important because they represent a high level of sophistication in terms of measurement. Some variables allow us to speak more precisely about the distances between the categories, that difference that, that I was mentioning about. So consider age for a moment measured in years. Now the distance between a 10 year old right, 10 year old, and a 20 year old is exactly the same as that between 50 year old and 60 years old and that is 10 years, right? That's good. Now, uh, similarly consider the time uh, gone on vacation measured in terms of days, you know, somebody who's been there 10 days and 9 days, that's a difference of one day which is the same as somebody who's been there for three days and four days for example which have uh, a, a similar difference of one day so the difference now is measurable 
And not only that there is a difference, as I said, but the, the, that difference is measurable. Now, everything that I said about a ratio variable completely applies to the interval variables. The, there is a difference. There is difference. And the difference is measurable. Okay, fine. However, what the ratio variable has that interval does not have is an additional quality of contain, uh, containing a genuine zero point, also called a true zero point. Now this property is what allows us to examine ratios between categories constituting such variables. Now, if we say that, again with the age and vacation days, uh, if we say that a 20-year-old, okay, is twice as old as a 10 year old we'll be able to say that because 20 divided by 10 is 2 20 years is twice as old as a 10 year old now also somebody who stayed for 14 days in vacation has stayed twice as long as somebody who stayed seven days why because there is a zero days and also, there is a zero years that can be measured in vacation and age, respectively. But by comparison, just notice that we cannot and would not have any grounds for saying that one person is twice as religious as another person because there is no zero point in the relig religiosity. Therefore, ratio variables share all the qualities associated with nominal and ordinal variables but have also additional qualities that are not applicable to the lower level uh, measures. Now, other examples of ratio, uh, in addition to age and vacation days and so on, uh, years of schooling, number of delinquent acts, will be uh, income measured in dollars, and so on. So, ratio has a true zero point, interval does not. Now, what does that mean? Let's take, uh, for example, the IQ. Although it is cal calculated in such a way that allows for a score of zero, zero IQ, right? Now, that would not indicate a complete lack of intelligence because the person would have at least been able to take the test and that means that he does not have any lack of intelligence. Okay, somebody who has 110 IQ would still have 10 more than somebody who would score 100 in IQ, therefore we can calculate that difference. However, we cannot say that somebody who has 120 IQ is twice as smart or intelligent as somebody who has a score of 60. Why? Because there is no zero point. Another classic example of interval variables is the temperature as measured in Fahrenheit and Celsius. Now, what does this mean? The Celsius and Fahrenheit measures of temperature both have zero degree marks. We already know that. But that does not really mean that it represents a total lack of heat, given that it is possible to have temperatures below zero. As we know, there is below eight uh, uh, degrees Fahrenheit or minus eight degrees Celsius and so on and so on. Now, because there is no true zero point where there is no total lack of heat it means that the temperature measured in Fahrenheit or Celsius is an interval uh, level of measurement. Take now in comparison the Kelvin uh, uh, scale which by contrast is measured in an absolute zero okay absolute zero which actually does represent a total lack of heat as measured in terms of molecular motion and it is therefore a ratio variable because the absolute zero exists. Now let's quickly summarize what we learned about these levels of measurement. A nominal variable just names the categories of the variable. For example, the car you drive, Honda, Ford, and so on. It uh, assigns a value to categories. So, for example, if you have one and two for male and female respectively, do not really get confused about one and two because they do not represent anything. Okay, uh, we could just as well assign a number of 500 
for males and the 700 for females. You cannot add them. You cannot do any mathematical operation with those. You cannot find a mean. You cannot add 500, 700 together, divide by 2, and get a number, number of 600 because that do not really represent or mean anything. Now, an ordinal variable has the naming attributes of nominal variable, but also there is a difference between categories. This difference is very important because there is from low to high or represent different levels of feelings and emotions, but this difference cannot be really measured. Um, we talked about the grades in letter grades. Okay. Now, an interval variable, the difference is not only important, but it also can be measured. So, important and meaningful difference and it also can be measured. Now, uh, we talked about the temperature, so a, uh, a temperature of 150 Fahrenheit is 30 degrees hotter than 120, and we can actually measure that difference, as, as, you, can, as you can see. Now, also, there is another thing that, for example, if we looked at the letter grades being ordinal, because we cannot really measure the difference between A and B+, plus, uh, GPA, now actually can be an interval variable because you can really measure the difference between a 4.0 and 3.7 which is the same as uh, 0 0.3 between 2.3 and 2.0 okay so this is the same difference therefore you can measure it and therefore the GPA becomes an interval variable a ratio variable has all the qualities in the nominal, ordinal, and interval, plus you can add a true or genuine zero point, which allows you to make ratios. And you can say that something is twice as big or as small as something else, or somebody is making twice as, as much more money than somebody else in terms of income or when measured in dollars. Or, for example, a meal has 2,000 calories more than another meal that has a thousand calories. Age is a ratio variable as well and as we mentioned there are a plethora of other variables that you can find in the ratio. Interval and ratio are called scale or numerical and these are the highest levels of measurement in terms of sophistication and a ratio and interval variable can very well be turned into a nominal or ordinal. For example age uh, as measured in ratio variable 0, 1, 2, 56, and so on, can be turned into an ordinal, say, young, middle age, old. Okay? So, I hope that this helped you a lot, and I hope that you ace any exam that has to do with levels of measurement. Until next time, have a great day.